So welcome back all of you. Now I'm here and then we are into the uh, 17th session of this uh, EBIS fusion uh, procurement implementation. Am I correct? Okay, so <clears throat> we go there, go ahead. And then I will not, uh, I will not share the screen. Now we are now into procure to pay push now. We are into procure to pay push now. So we go there. Let me share my screen now. What happened is that on the other day, by mistake, I took J50 and then started demoing for another batch, basically. So now what I'm going to do is I will now go there. I will now, first of all, for period opening, I will now use their number now. I will now use their number for opening the periods. I had to show you the opening of the periods now. I go there. So click on this now. Wave solution. I will now use their number for doing it now. Fine. This is J35 underscore EMP11. Actually, one I made a mistake. So one one I created now. So here it's uh, I'm now putting this uh, password and then entering it now. Fine. Only for demo purposes, only for the open of the period, I will not show this. Otherwise, it will not come back to J50. So click on it now. So we are going to open the periods now. So for opening the periods, what happens? You must have the GL roles basically. Fine, if you go and then have a look at it now. Fine, go to the security console. And then go there, click on more. And then here you go to the security console. And then query this user now. Go to the user and then query this user. It is J35 underscore entering. So EMP11 actually. EMP11 is the one. I'm using it now. I go there and then have a look at it now. And here, what happens? You go down and see this. So, accounts payables manager, specialist and supervisor is required for payables now. Right? Once when these two roles are available here, what happens? You can believe will do the payable activity and then go down. And then here, what happens? General accounting manager and then uh, what happens? You'll be having one more thing. Right? General accountant. So, the general accountant and general accounting manager is for GL activity. So, we are given these two roles. <coughs> so, with which we can open the periods and then you can do all the activities in GL actually. So, the GLs and payables have been added. I click on that and then we are given the data access also my data access also is given and then afterwards what happens we go there and then we will now see this fine you go to open the period fine. click on the navigator icon and then here what happens you go to the general general accounting and then go to the period close navigator icon general accounting period close here what happens you're going to open the periods I click on the period close so once when you open it up what happens you will now see the data access set coming up the top what happens? The data access is no sign. So if it is not there, what happens? You have to first of all, you, you are you have only one data access set, so that will be coming automatically. And then as of now, what happens? The accounting period is seven, nine hundred seventy. What happens? General ledger is never open at all. So here I have not even opened the periods at all. So it will also be like this only. The payables is never open. So click on the general ledger and then try to open the period. Now. Click on the general ledger. So click on it and then open the period. Now. It says, do you want to open the first period as Jan seventeen? Yes. Fine. Click on OK. Accept this. And then what happens? The concurrent will now run for opening the period. This action will open the first period of the template. You want to click on yes. So we are going to open it up now. So a concurrent is now running. So once when it is completed, what happens? You can now see the first period getting opened up. So we have a refresh icon over here now. I click on the refresh icon. And then the refresh icon will now show you yes, the first general is open. Now we go and then open directly the number one. Fine, go there. You go to actions and then here what happens? Open the target period. So in EBS also what happens? We can directly go and then open the target period. Fine, go to the actions and then click on the open target period. Actions open target period. So drop down. So he's now asking for uh, what happens uh, the 13th period. Fine, I'll now choose the December. I will now open the December. December 17, I'm going to open it up. Fine. There, there is a 13th period actually. Fine, go there. December period, I'm opening it up. So up to December or up to November, whatever you want is an open up. I now open up to November now. So November, I will now click on open now. So I'm going to open it up now. So click on open. So this action will open all the periods up to November. Fine, click on S now. So this concurrent is now going to open all the periods. <coughs> so by which what happened? The GL periods are not getting opened. So it's not getting. So once when the GL is opened, then the payables period can be opened. And remember, only the financial modules will be having period. The supply chain period, supply chain modules do not have any period at all. So you can now see up to November is all open. Up to November. So this uh, icon indicates is open, and that this is a future a future interval. That is future interval is over. So we have opened all the GL periods. So I click on that. Now I will now go to the payables. Click on that. Now you can see the general ledger for November 17 is open, whereas payable is never opened at all. The payables. So the payables, projects, receivables, and then uh, if we have costing is also having a period, but uh, costing period will not be coming here, it will be coming in a separate place. Costing period will be coming. Apart from that, any financial modules you have now uh, got license, whatever, they will all be listed over here. So for which, whatever, they have to open the periods. So click on the payables, never open period. 
never open click on it now and then here what what is the first period is asking for drop down and then choose the appropriate first period so i will not say it is now coming as what december 17 Fine. And then what happens? It is not showing. Mainly because what happens? Whenever you open the GL period, you have to log out and log in. Then only it will not show. Otherwise, it will not show properly. So what happens? You have to log out and log in. So click on done, and then come out of it. Log out and log in. After the GL is open, you log out and log in. Then only payables, the every period will be visible actually. And log out and log in. Click on sign out, and then I am going to sign. But none of that in uh, in our tool, uh, we don't have any costing periods, right? Is a yeah. new infusion. uh costing uh, do not have any periods of course naturally because inventory period is now clubbed along with the costing but here what happens costing is a separate module it is a nasd module and so what happens uh, it is a, it is having a period now <coughs> so it's what g35 underscore emp11 oracle fine go there and then log in now it's a uh, sorry g sorry it is j35 Let's go. EMP one one. So go there. So here, what happens? We have to log out and log in for opening the payable period. And again, go to the same navigation. Click on the navigator icon. And then here, what happens? We go there. And then click on the very close. And then here, what happens? You now see this now. <clears throat> this time, if you go and then click on the payables, never open period. What happens? It will open up and then show it. Click on the payables, never open period. So drop down now. Your January seventeen will be coming. Previously December seventeen was coming. Now January seventeen. Remember, if you open anywhere in between, we cannot open any periods before at all. And if you say if you open March or April, so the first period becomes January, and then what happens? You cannot open anything at all. So let's join. I think uh, you are having some problem in your account. Doing it, I think. Mm -hmm. So go there, make it as January seventeen, and then click on OK. So we are now opening January as the first period now. Click on S now. So the period is now getting open. And then refresh it now. So what happens? January is open. Here, or I will now go on the open to now over now. Find good actions, and then go to open target period. So go to the actions, and then go to open target period. And then again, what happens? You now find what happens. You now say up to now over. So in EBS, what happens? We cannot use the target period for payables. Basically, payables has to be opened only one by one now. So here, what happens? This is also extended to payables. Fine. So the target period is now extended to payables. Fine. Click on open now. That is not available in EBS. EBS, you have to open one by one. Okay. Or you can even open randomly. Basically. That is how it is. So it is not getting opened up now. So you can now see up to now, but it is all open. Fine, you pay. Fine. This is on the period open. So only for demonstrating the period opening, I will come over here now. Fine, let me log out and then come to office. So the period opening by mistake, what happens? I opened our J50, and so what happens? I'm now logging out, and then I will now come to J J50 and then log in now. Click on this. Click on confirm. Now let me go and then log in at J50. Underscore EMP one. So I put my password and then enter. Now we are going to have a procure to pay push. Now we are going to have a procure to pay push. So let us now go on and see in EBS how the procure to pay push is happening now. Fine, go there, click on it. So let me go to supply base supplier on this now. Fine, go there, and then let me query my supplier J50. I am going to query it now. Go down, and then query my J50 supplier. J50 supplier, and then enter. So I am now querying in the US. And here, what happens? I go to the purchasing tab region, purchasing area. Find the left hand side in the purchasing. What happens? I go to the sell billing now. Purchasing has got a sell billing. So here, what happens? I am going to say what pay on is what pay on is it? And then here, what happens? Invoice summary level. Drop it down. And then what happens? It is citizen. Or otherwise, what happens? I am going to say uh, invoice summary level is pay site. I am going to query. By invoice summary level, no matter the result. Fine. So uh, pay site means what? It will not club everything. So GRN number will be the invoice summary level. 
fine. Result, result, fine. Two orders. This combination. So we also have the similar combination in fusion now. So pay on is result, and then invoice summer level is result. Fine. Go there. And then click on save now. It is now getting completed. So J50 is now enabled for ERS. This is for ERS setup now. Evaluated result settlement. Evaluated result settlement. Fine. Go there. Now we are going to see this in uh, what happens in, in uh, as you think. We now go and get a purchase order for this now. Fine. Go there. So let us now open up a purchase order and then pay it. Fine. Go there. J50. And then give it a tap. Click on the item. So J50 asset item. I'm going to put it now. So I'll now put the asset item over here now. Fine. Go find it. What it is now. Go there. I will now give a promise date. Fine. Now here, what happens if you click on the terms, you can now see the payout result is now defaulted over here. So in infusion also, what happens? The payout result which has been set on the supplier side will be getting defaulted over here. So that is also made in over here. Now fine, go there, close it. And then here, what happens? You go to the shipments, and then the shipment is already created. Fine. The distributions, everything is now coming. In the receiving controls, what happens? It will be direct delivery. Fine, go there, click on close, and then commit. So by which what happens? The purchase order is now getting created. So for hundred quantities, what happens? Six six three nine is now getting created. Let me get now. Click on approve. So here, what happens? I'm going to approve it now. Now, what happens when you wanted to receive? At the time, what happens? It now push into payables also automatically. So before which, what happens? We'll have a profile. I go there. Switch responsibility to switch admin now. So we are going to set up a profile. Now. So go to the profile system values. So here comes PO percentage. What happens? The prefix percentage. Right? So is the ER as invoice prefix? So let us say I will now say Tata. Fine. Tata is a prefix. I'm going to give it now. Fine. Tata underscore. I'm not putting. I'm going to give a save. So what happens whenever an invoice is now created, the implementing company's uh, what happens the name will be coming as a part of the invoice now. So PO ERS invoice numbering profiles. We also have the same profile fine, in uh, Fusion. Fusion also has got a profile. So that profile, if you set it up, what happens? It will be working as such. Now fine, go there. We come back to purchasing. You go to the come back to purchasing, and then here we will now perform a result for this. So what is the number of the purchase order? Fine, let me go and control flow and create now. I think six six three nine. 6639, fantastic. This guy has not slept at all. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> 6639 is the one. We we'll go to the window and then go to the navigator now. And go there. So here, what happens? I go and then receive it now. And go to the receiving and the 6639, I'm going to make a result now. My name on. 6639. I go there. Click on find now. Fine. Click on it. And then here, what happens? Close it. And then now, what happens? Uh, you log select it now. Select the line, and then I'm going to receive 20 commodities. So, the moment I receive it, what happens? It will now ask for the sub inventory now. Fine, go on the provide the sub inventory. So, what happens? Three concurrence will now run. Three concurrence will now run. Fine. One is RTP. And then afterwards, the pay on reserve order invoice. Then payables open interface import. Now, what happens? Pay on reserve order invoice has been bypassed. There is no one required. Only when you want to interface it to external systems, what happens? There is a separate contract. Fine. So through which what happens you do it. Otherwise, pay on the order invoice is now what happens. There is, uh, sorry, receiving transaction process. The receiving transaction process has been bypassed in Fusion, so it doesn't run at all. Fine. And then afterwards, pay on the order invoice. Fine. That will run. Fine. Go and then commit. You can now see this now. For 20 quantities, what happens? I'm making this up. You have a look at it now. Fine. RTP is going to run. So in Fusion, RTP doesn't run. Fine, go there. The fusion not be Once when it is completed, what happens is going to automatically trigger the ADS pay order. Fine. The second concurrent is automatically getting triggered. But whereas in fusion, it is not getting automatically triggered. I don't know how to do that now. So can some of you make an R and D and then tell me about how to do that now? What setup is making it to run automatically? I don't know. In fusion, we have to run it manually. And no, in one of the customers' location, they were asking it to run automatically. Then I scheduled it actually. Every five minutes I scheduled it. That is not the correct way. So it is what happens. It is based upon what happens. Uh, uh, event triggering. Fine. When an event happens, then only what happens. It has to run now. But event triggering, I am unable to make it now. I don't know what setup has to be made. So, so the finance was asking. Then otherwise, I made a compromise on this now in the actual implementation. Fine. That is not correct actually. So once when the RTP gets completed, you can now see ADS pay on the set is running. This is known as send pay on the set. In Fusion, it is known as send pay on the set. That I have to run it manually. I don't know what. But once when I run this, the next concurrent is now automatically happening. So once when this ADS, ADS pay and pay result happens, what happens? The next concurrent runs automatically. That is yeah, payables open import interface import. Payables open interface import will be running automatically. That is running. So once when send pay on result is running, what happens? The payables open interface import is running. So some of you please uh, try to make an R&D and then uh, tell me how to run this send pay on result automatically.
So the next concurrent is a, a payables open interface import is going to run now. Fine, let it get completed. And then that will be creating the alarm. So payables open interface import is running. So this is running. This is known as import invoices. This is known as import invoices in Fusion. That is running. But this I have to manually run. I want to automate it, but I don't know how to do it now. <clears throat> oh, yeah. But not as a row in the fusion is happening for a receiving transaction processor. Uh, yeah, RTP is not required at all. It, oh. it automatically happens now. Fine. They say that it is no more required. But what happens when you want to interface uh, your uh, fusion system into some other systems, there is some other concurrence which will take care of interface. Oh, okay. uh, here, what happens even RTP is used for interfacing it to other uh, uh, what happens, ERPs or other external systems actually. But for ex uh, for interfacing into other ERP and external systems, there is some other concurrence. So RTP is no more required at all. And try to understand whenever, whenever you're integrating it. So they have some other concurrence for you. We go to the payables open interface board and then view the output of it now. So we are going to view the output of it. Here what happens, you can now see the Tata underscore and then what happens, your GRN and a running number. Where from this running number is coming, I don't know. Anybody has got any idea about it? It's got a three points. The Tata is a profile and then this is a GRN number now. This is a GRN number. And then this is a running number. In Fusion also the same thing is happening. <laughs> But accounts what happens have been rejected actually because what happens account date is not in the open period. So because of which what happens it has got rejected. So we'll now go and then open the periods and then come over here and find over there. And so here in fusion also what happens the payable period will be open otherwise it will be getting rejected. It has got rejected. Fine, close it now. So we'll now go there, open the what happens now see switch responsibility to GL now and then have a look at whether the GL period is open or not. We'll go there, go to set up and open close. We'll have a look at the GL period first of all. <coughs> fine, click on fine now. So GL. November is open, December is only future, fine, doesn't matter, okay, fine, go there. We will now switch responsibility to payables now. We'll go to the payables, payables version operations. Here, we'll now see the opening period, fine. You go to the accounting, and then go to the control payable periods. Accounting, control payable periods, the navigation, double click on it, and then you will now see if the number is open or not, fine. Here, what happens, the number is not open. We can even open in a random manner. August, we can open it up, fine. And then here, what happens, the number also we can open up. Whereas in Fusion, what happens, it is sequential now, fine. Once when you say up to November, up to October, we had to open now, fine. So number is open now. Now what happens? Uh, we have to run the same concurrent only fine because it has got parameters now. Fine, go there. So we have to run the same concurrent now. Uh, click on the copy, and then the same one has to be run. Click on find now. Oh God, it's not there. So we have to go to the purchasing and then do it. I think. Purchasing it will be there. Fine, close it now. Switch responsibility to purchasing, and then here, what happens? We'll be having the concurrent. Fine. Click on copy and then drop down find. So the what happens? The pay on the audit invoice uh, has already pushed now. So this was giving a problem. This was having a problem. Fine. It has got some parameters over here. Fine. Okay. So we had to pass on, run the same concurrent which is having the ERS parameters. Fine. The ERS parameters are not shown here. Give a tab. And then here, uh, how to see the parameters here? They're not showing at all. Ah, okay. The parameters are there. So submit it. So once when along with the same parameters, you have to copy and then run. So then only what I'm going to be doing is to this. Tables open interface input. Click on OK now. Enter value for the process time parameter. What is this? OK. I think the ERS parameters, everything has come now. Process time out. Fine. Go there. I'm going to say no. OK. Fine. The same parameters are coming over here now. Fine. So this is what I click on OK. I think, uh, I don't know whether it is correct or not. Fine. There is some mistake here. Come on, why it has become a background process? Fine. Go there. How it has become a background process? Close it now. Submit a new request. Click on copy. I think the responsibility is not exist here. I think concurrent program is not existing in this responsibility. Oh, oh, oh. Payables open interface import is yeah. not existing in this responsibility. But do we know? That may be the reason now. Okay, now it's at least. You click on submit now without doing it okay. It may be that you are very correct now. So payables open interface import may not be existing this responsibility. You go to sysadmin now and then go there. You go to security user responsibility and then go to the request now. So it's uh, all request and then this purchasing you are percentage and all reports purchasing now now this one all reports purchasing so here we'll now introduce the manual down there. Here, what I'm going to say, uh, payables open interface import. Payables open interface import. And then save it. So now we'll again go and then copy now and go there. We're going to switch response to purchasing. And then 
you go there and how to verify. Click on copy. And then click on find now. And then click on OK. And now it's coming properly. Clap hands. Or so, right? Then nicely. I get on OK now. So go there. Click on submit now. Find payables open interface import is now run from this place itself. Fine. No. This time, what happens? It will be bringing in. previously. What happened? The previous output was on the rejection. Now, fine. So, it is the payables open interface rejections report. The invoice was there, fine. But now, what happens? It will be coming as a normal one. Go ahead and close it, and then here, click on it. So, it will be coming under the normal one now. So, that one is not running automatically. The send pay on the set is not running automatically because of which what happens? I have to manually create it. The remaining things are exactly like what we have in Ebus now. So it's running. It's now completed. Fine. Click on the view output of it now. <clears throat> now you can see what happens. The rejection is nothing. Fine, here it is now being imported along with the taxes, fine, along with the state, county, and city taxes. What happens? Now, here again, what happens? This is a prefix I have given, and then this is a GRN number, and then this is a running number now. Fine, try to identify how to set up this running number. Fine, tell me, and then it will be grateful. I, I don't know how to do that now. Fine, this running number, I don't know. And again, what happens? Send the pay on the set is not running automatically. Fine, what else? So we'll now go to uh, Fusion, and then we'll now set up this ERS now. Fine, we are going to set up the ERS. Fine, close it now. So let us go on and set up the ERS now. Go to this place. And then I went to this place. Here what happens? I go there. I go to the procurement. <coughs> click on the procurement. And then go to the suppliers. And then I'm going to make the supplier as a what, ERS supplier. And click on the supplier. So let me query the supplier. And then I'm going to make him as a ERS supplier. I might have already made it because what happens? The, the entire demo, I have done it on <laughs> this one now. So go there. Click on manage suppliers. Manage suppliers. By mistake, what happens? I forgot on your this number. I was uh, working on this number. James, no, no, sir. What what type of business scenario this will happen automatically once I receive the material? Yeah, the invoice good question. Be... What happens? Let us say I am not having a supplier. I have asked some item, fine, some mobile. Let us say I want to give it to all the employees. Say let us say around 500 mobiles I want. So the market price is let us say 10,000 rupees. And now I have negotiated a price of 5,500. Supplier is saying that I am buying from the manufacturer at 5,000. And so what happens? I'm getting a very minimal profit. So what happens? What you do is, as soon as you receive in the gate, why don't you process the invoice and then make a payment? I will be sending the invoice later on. So in which case, what happens? This is called self-billing. So this is called self-billing. So here, what happens? We enable self-billing. So we will be doing the billing on behalf of the supplier, actually. And this is a very famous one, where what happens? The prices are negotiated on a cutthroat price. Or otherwise, what happens? There are some reasons. Let us say he is the only monopoly supplier. Nobody else is there. He's saying that as soon as he receives the gate, I want a payment. He is not dictating terms with you. Fine. <clears throat> he is not twisting right. your arms. Fine. But you, you have no other go. Fine. You have to listen to him. Or otherwise, what happens? He is now supplying some low value items for which what happens? He is saying, sir, the profit margin is very low. So why don't you make a payment immediately? So that too, what happens as soon as you receive the gate, you create the invoice on his behalf. This is called self billing. We ourselves can do the billing, and then it is legally allowed in every country. Every country is allowing it. So such cases, what happens? The ERS invoice, the evaluated receipt settlement invoice, will be created automatically. Click on this one. Edit, and then you go there. Go to the sites, and then I'm going to edit. Select it, and then edit. Edit, edit, and then here you go to the purchasing. You go to the purchasing. Here, what happens? You go there, purchasing. And then here, what happens? You go there, pay on the is already enabled. And then the summary level is received. So, this too has to be enabled. Pay on the and then receipt have been enabled now. Fine, what else? Go there. So, I will not save anything at all. Fine. So, this is on the self billing activity. Self billing, what happens? You what it is. So, receipt is one. So, pay on the is now enabled. Fine, cancel it now. They already enabled for the one. I go there. Let us now make a purchase order. I click on it. And then go on and create a purchase order for this. We go to the base solution. And then we'll now create a purchase order for this. So click on it. And then go to the procurement. And then create a purchase order. Click on procurement. And then create a purchase order. For G50. <coughs> so 
purchase. Click on it and then click on create purchase order. Create order. I'm not going to create order now. So here, what happens? I'll now put the supplier over here now. Find J50 and then give it a J50 supplier. It is not coming over here. Now. It's all done. So once when this is done, what happens? You go and click on create now. So I'm going to create now. J50 supplier site one. Everything is not coming back. Click on create. So I'm now creating the supplier. Creating the purchase order. You can now see the pay on visit is now coming automatically over here inside. Now. You can now see on this place. So that pay on visit tick mark is coming on the header itself now. You go down and then you click on plus now. And then it is J50 underscore item one. I'm putting the bus data over here now. Go for it quantities now. And then go to the schedules and then give a date now. Click on the schedules and give it eight. I will not give today's date now. Fine. Today's date is what? 25th now. So 25th is the one, 25, 11, 17. I'm giving it that. I'm doing it now. And then here in the schedules, what happens if you go on and see the receipt routing can be anything. If the receipt routing is going to be standard, let us say the standard, what happens? We have to what? You have to receive it to the gate and then afterwards deliver it to the inventory. Then only what happens, the stock will be released. But here what happens, as and when you make the gate receipt, what happens, it gets pushed into payables automatically. So as and when you put it to the push into the payables, the standard receipt is not done. As and when it is now pushed to the, received to the gate, what happens, it pushed into the payables automatically basically because of the years. Go there, click on OK now. So 2023 is now a standard receipt product. Fine. Go to the save and then click on actions, validate. You now have validation of this now. So go to validate. So by validating it, what happens? You can see it's now getting validated, not behaving in errors. I go there and submit for it. So 2023 is now for 100 quantities at the standard result. And then the moment you make a gate result, what happens? It has to be pushed into payables. But pushing is not happening now. So for which what happens? Something else is required on the automation part. I don't know what exactly is that. <clears throat> now what happens? 2023 is not done. So let us go and then receive it now. If I go there, let us receive it now. Go there, wait situation. Let us now go on and receive it now. So click on it and then go to warehouse operations and then go to receipts now. Click on the home icon. You go to the warehouse operations and go there. You go to the warehouse operations and then go to the receipts. You're performing a receipt. And then before receiving it, what happens? We will now set up the profile now. Fine, go there. We will now set up the purchasing profile. And go there. You go to the setup and maintenance. Here is the receiving profile now. Right. Is a RCV profile is a receiving profile. So go there, manage receiving profiles, manage percentage receiving percentage profile. So let us set it up now. Fine. Go there, manage receiving profiles. So go to the manage receiving profile options, click on it now. Here we'll now fix up the prefix now. Invoice prefixing we are going to do. So click on search. So you are getting it into the manage receiving profile options. Click on search now. So we are going to search now. So once when you give a search, it will now show all the profiles now. Here we are going plenty of profiles over here now. Fine, go there. And then here, what I want to say, ERS, RC, RCV, ERS prefix. Here, go there. I will now make a change now. Fine, go there. So somebody has changed it. Fine, I will now say put Tata over here now. Fine, Tata underscore. I'm putting a value over here. So RCV, ERS prefix value, fine. At the site level, I'm setting it up. Fine, go there. Click on save now. And then here, what happens? Many companies will be having a aging also. For example, Monday to Friday, I'm now doing it. What happens in my company? In steel authority, what happens? Uh, we create what happens? Uh, uh, the invoices only on one day. So, right, that is on Friday. So they process everything on Friday and then do it now. Similarly, what happens? Uh, you have the facility of aging now, RCV aging period. So as and when it is received, you wait for two days and then afterwards create invoice. RCV aging period, I'm going to say. Right, go there. And then here I will not say, I will not make it as three. No. Fine, make it as three. So only after three days, what happens? The invoice will be done. So here this parameter can be bypassed during actual invoice creation. When you are running the send pay on it manually, we can bypass it. If it runs automatically, it will be taken to three period, three days period. Right. So it is RCV aging period. I'm now setting it to three. Fine, go there, save and then save and close. So two of the profiles I have made now. I click on save and close. Now what happens? I'm going to make a gate reserve. I click on that and then let me make a gate reserve. So go there. I will now go to this place. So one is Tata underscore, one is three days. I go there. And then here I go to the warehouse operations and then I go to the reserves now. I go to the results, click on the results, and then I'm now going to query <clears throat> on my 2023 now. If I click on it, and then I'm now query on 2023, I click on the receive expected shipments. 2023 is the one, 2023, and then you tab, and then click on search. 
select it now and click on receive so i'm going to go home and receive click on receive so i have not received everything i will not receive only partially say 10 quantities i'm going to receive out of 100 now or 100 i'm going to receive so go there i will not receive only 10 quantities since we have enabled the blind receiving it is not showing this number and go there so it is only receiving section and if you want you can even bypass it and then send it inventory also because what happens we are now given the receipt override options in the receiving parameter go there sub inventory is not required at this stage fine click on create receipt for 10 quantities i am not creating a receipt like it now so for this quantities what happens we can very well automatically push over thank you consultant there may be some options somewhere here find out uh, how to do that now fine now send pay on receipt is not running so since it is not running what happens uh, what is the gr number i forgot to see this now okay gr number will be something so you can now see the gr number coming up here otherwise what happens you can now go to the inventory and then see the transactions basically thank you for it so here what happens you can now see what happens review completed transactions click on the review transaction complete transaction inventory and then here you know put the item over here now fine it is j50 underscore item one and then click on search now it will show you the complete transaction only for today now so nothing is completed because what happens it only made a gate is it actually fine so gate is it only made is not delivered actually so click on done now <clears throat> so that is what else now what happens we go there and then run one more concurrent fine control t and then here what happens we go there then now run the concurrent go to this place and it last for this now once again let me go and then deliver it also because while well, running the concurrent it now ask for the gr number actually uh we go there let me deliver it also fine go to this place and then uh, you go to the manage item quantities go to the receipts and then let me deliver it also put away in order let me put away put away transaction let me go on it now so do you put away now and click on put away receipts now and then i will now put the purchase order number 2023 i am going to put it not on the gr number and click on search now it will not show you this right so the document number is what 1014 is the receipt number and select it now and click on put away so let me put away all the quantities 10 quantities and supplementary is mandatory now 1014 is the gr number now and go there and then click on submit now let us run them uh, what happens you now go to the uh, what happens you go there and then see the payables basically and then go to the invoice and see whether any invoice now created or not and go there go to the payables invoice and click on it if it gets solved it is nice basically go to the invoices payables and then i go to the invoices and i go to have a look at the invoices i go there i am now going to the payables invoice area and then let me have a look at it now find whether the invoice is now created or not and click on the right hand side and then here what happens you go there and then go to the manage invoices now Right, manage invoices and then query on the supplier now. So supplier number, supplier number is not known to me. Supplier party is known. Right, J fifty underscore sub one. Right, one of the details sufficient now. Right, click on search now. So I know given this one. So they're all double double star, double double star out of double double star. What happens? One is sufficient. Click on search now. So what happens? Oh God, you know, is somebody else now? Is somebody else now? Fine, somebody has created on mine now, basically. VAK is created. Is the one zero one four is our GR number now? Fine, one zero one four is our GR number. Fine. So the GR number is not is not ours actually. Thank you, Kanta. Now what happens? We now go on and run it now. Fine, one for one zero one four. I am going to run it now. Fine, go there and then let me run the concurrent now. We go to the wait solution now. Rather, I only was demonstrating it on the other day, so it's not coming over there. So you keep going. And now what happens? You go there and then run the concurrent. Send pay on as a concurrent. I manually run it. Go there. Click on the more. Click on the scheduled process now. Fine. Go to the scheduled process and then I am going to run the concurrent manually. Send pay on as a. Submit a new request and then it is send pay and then you get a send pay on as a to the concurrent. So click on OK. And then pass on the parameters. One zero one from transaction source. What happens is ERS. Fine. So we have the A, uh, A advance shipment and billing notice also has come over here now. But I don't know whether it's still working or not. Maybe in release study it will definitely work. Advance shipment and billing notice is now just started coming back. So that will also work in uh, basically in uh, release study actually. So it is ERS now. Evaluated receipt statement go there. And then the receipt number is one zero one four. One zero one four. And then you tap the receipt number. I'm going to do it now. So here, what happens? I have to choose the appropriate uh, what happens child or no. So one zero one four is now available. Multiple child dogs. Where is my J fifty? Come on here. One zero one four. J fifty. Fourth one, no, no, fourth one. 
and then click on it and then click on okay now fine over us now the aging period has got defaulted from the profile option now i am now overriding and then setting it to it now it will be created so what happens it will not become from the profile option will not come fine i am now changing it to zero now. and now that is what it will not immediately create what happens in voice otherwise it will not wait for three days and then create it now so aging period has been made to set to zero now and then this you can leave it as such now and then click on submit by which what happens is now going to run so this will now trigger the payables open interface import now which is known as import invoices here now so this concurrent how to run it automatically upon receipt uh, somebody uh, make an rnd and tell me right? yes if you read the document it will be available somewhere no patience to read it all so the import payables invoices is now running so once when it is run you can now see the 1014 uh, grn number the invoice will be ready for 10 corner this time click on that so many companies do not operate like this they operate on a packing slip if the supplier is not going to supply a packing slip what happens is they want that to be forming part of the invoice number the packing slip of the supplier will now form part of the invoice number that is how many companies operate actually so that is the next exercise the summary level is no more receipt but it will be packing slip which is followed by many many companies so import payables invoice no running it is not completed so you go to the invoice workbench and then click on the manage invoices and click on the manage invoices and then query for this now one fine go there go to the supplier party it is j50 underscore sub one your tab and then click on search now you'll be getting the 1014 invoice coming up click on search now fine bandichi our invoices come for 10 quarters along with the taxes and if you click on this now, tata so tata and then 1014 and then this running number so please it is 19001 Here it is twenty thousand one. Come on, yeah. There must be at least some sequential numbers, right? It must be ninety thousand two. But how come this number is now in a very random manner? I don't understand this. So two thousand twenty thousand one is the invoice number. If you go there and then see the status of it now. <clears throat> so here, what happens if you go there? So it is not yet validated. So you can go to actions and then go to validate. Now. So once when you validate it, what happens? Sir? The line level distributions are already created now. The line level distributions are created, so it is validated. Go there. the line level the distributions are auto created the distributions are auto created line level and so what about no need to manually create anything at all so on a year as invoice but here what happens the numbering is not this way now fine this way of numbering is not there the packing slip will now form part of the number or not 1014 that is the famous one now many companies 90 95% company is what happens they use the packing for the auto invoice what happens they make the packing slip of the supplier as auto invoice and go there so let us now make a modification of this now fine go there go to the supplier and then here what happens they go then query it now fine click on edit now so now you're going to make a modification of this now it's exactly like gibbs what we have now fine go there in this place what happens don't make the summary as a receipt what happens make it as a packing slip so invoice summary level be packing slip this is what followed by many companies packing slip So the sum so the supplies packing slip will now form a part of the invoice. So we will now say we will now know against which packing slip you have now made a payment. Now. I click on it and go there. We are now going to make receipt now. Fine. You go there. We will now make receipt. Check on them now. <clears throat> you go there. We will now make a receipt now. Fine. You expect receive expected shipments two zero two three two zero two three. And then go to tab and then click on search now. We now go for another twenty corner days now. This time, I click on the receipt. The gate is it only I'm going to make it now. Fine. Go for twenty corner days. Now, what happens? Click on create receipt. So this will be creating a GRN number now. Fine. Here, while submitting it, what happens? I'm going to put a packing slip now. Fine. I will now say pack underscore four five six. This will now form part of the invoice number. This is supplier's packing slip, and then they will now. This will now come into the invoice now because what happens? The summary level is packing slip. many companies follow so that what happens they can even keep keep a clear track that which packing slip has been paid now so uh, even when they are communicating with the or up as suppliers over phone what happens they got the invoice for so and so packing slip packing slips so you say so uh, some uh, 10 packing slips out of which one is still missing sir likewise what happens they can easily track it and which one has not been processed i click on submit now so the packing slip is the one which is now used to many companies so 1015 and then pack 456 will form part of the invoice and go there click on it 1015 And then you go there, and then we are now running it manually. Actually, fine. Click on the schedule, <clears throat> and then get send the payment. Is it fine? Click on it. Sorry. Now you okay? Who you know? Sorry, the number. 
Pacific on Central Day. By Udang Kamu, you know, transactions was ERS. And then 1015 is the number, 1015. And then choose your child or no. Choose a child or no. And go there. And then aging period is zero now. Make it a zero. And then click on survey. This time, what happens? The packing slip will now form part of the invoice. The packing slip will form part of the invoice now. Send away on the system and complete it. Go there. The import payables invoice, which is nothing but payables open interface import. Fine. And there is no waiting. <coughs> Ready for running now. If it's not completed, fine. You go there, go to the invoice or and then query for it. You will not find the next invoice coming up. Fine, go there. You go to what? Manage invoices and then query for it now. So here, supplier is J50 underscore sub one and then give it a tab and then click on search now. You'll be finding what? The back slip is now coming for 20 contests. Tata underscore pack slip underscore running number. This time it has taken 19,000 to come on here. Yeah. I couldn't understand the logic at all. Open up and then see this one. So this is what happens. You can now see on the line level, the distribution is already made now. Fine. The distributions are what happens. It is the accrual is relieved actually. The accrual is relieved and then it is not taking it. And then go there. Good actions are not validated. Good actions and then go to validate. And accounting is not yet done. Fine. But the full payable setup has not been done. And so what happens? You cannot do those things now. So what happens? They have not done the validation now. It's validated. And then accounting and then paying in full. The payment setup is not done. So once you do the payments, you know it. What happens when I was conducting for TCS, they were financial guys also. They have set up everything parallelly on financials and then they say everything paid, everything was coming for them. <laughs> they showed me all of the invoices. So fully it's all done. And then they have even set the taxes also. Taxes also they have done it. So what happens, summary tax lines, taxes also they have done it actually. Right. So do this now. Right. Now coming along with the taxes actually. Right. Some taxes, somebody, some financial guy is working upon I think probably because of which what happened, taxes also. Next is what debit memo on RTS. So what happens when you want to return? What happens? We can even create a debit memo for which what happens? It has to be enabled at the supply level. Go there. So let us now enable the debit memo on RTS. Fine. Click on edit now. So we are going to enable the debit memo and go down. And then here, what happens? You can add enable. So here, what happens? You go on and enable the debit memo. <coughs> I'm sorry. So here, create debit memo from return transaction. So this supplier will shout basically. When something is a defective one, you send it to us, we will repair it and then send it to you back on the same day. Why you are reducing our, uh, your liability or reducing your payment? Basically. So this is going to reduce our liability. And so what happens? No concurrent need to be run. In EB is also no concurrent need to be run. In EB is what happens? The RTP will run. Afterwards, what happens? Uh, your uh, pay on will run. And then afterwards, only the invoice gets created. But for a debit memo, no concurrent will run. After RTP, what happens? No concurrent will run. So in EB is, it is uh, what happens? Your RTP. Then ADS pay on it and then payables open interface import. So when you enable it, what happens? The rebus, both the uh, ADS pay on it as well as open payable, payable open interface import will not run for debit memo. Here also, what happens is no concurrent will run and then the debit memo gets auto created if you enable this. If you enable it, what happens now there? So go there and then save it now. On the supplier side, what happens? I'm saving it now. Now we go there and then receive it now. Fine, go there, go to the result. And then go there, done. Let us now uh, return back now. Fine, go there. Return results. Return to supplier. Fine, return to zips. Return to zip is a navigation for returning it back to supplier now. Fine, click on return to zips. We are going to return it back to supplier now. Fine, the zip number is what? 1015. That is the zip number on which what happens. I am going to return it back. Click on the zip. And then select it and then what happens? You choose the return. Now I am going to return back to now. Fine. Here what happens? Since we have enabled the debit memo, the tick mark is now coming as one extra parameter. So in this return, what happens? Are are chordo. Fine, don't make any debit memo. So in that case, what happens? You can remove it now. Otherwise, leave it as such. So if you leave it as such, what happens? If you remove it, no debit memo will be created in the AP. And if you put it, what happens? The debit memo gets created. But before creating a debit memo, what happens? The talk to the supplier. Otherwise, you will not show it. Because you are providing excellent services and then you are reducing our payment. basically. So click on submit now. So what happens? When payment payables is now making a payment, they will now see how much net they have to pay. They will now add all the standard invoices and then subtract all the debit memos and then they will now make it. So the return transaction was created now. Fine, go there. So RTP is now gone. Here, what happens? No need to run any concurrent at all. So it will be immediately visible on the manage invoices. You go there, click on done, and then come out of it, and then go to the manage invoices. So click on it, and then here, what happens? You go to the manage invoices. So click on manage invoices, and then query for the supplier now. J50 underscore sub one. Go tab, and then click on search. 
you can now see what happens. The debit Momo would have been created. It's 1015-10001. And there is no prefix coming up at all on this one. So this is basically minus 2.25, which is a debit Momo. The other invoice, the standard invoice, is a debit Momo invoice. Right? The type is debit Momo invoice. So the debit Momo gets automatically created in the EBIS. And here also what happens, it gets automatically created because our liability is getting reduced. And so no need to check anything at all. You go there, good actions, and then go to validate. So, by which what happens, create validated. And then, afterwards, what happens, they go to accounting. Fine, afterwards, what happens, they go to pay in full actions, pay in full. So, other things are not set. What happens, I'm not, I'm not doing anything now. Fine. So, you go there. Once when you know payable setups, what happens, you can set up everything and then do the complete process, basically. So, this is on ERS. Now, we'll now go for a manual invoice. Fine, go there. Click on that. Now, go for the manual invoices. Now, fine, go there. Manually creating the invoice. So I go to the supplier, and then here what happens? I go there. Here I will now remove both. Fine. Pay on it. I'm going to receive it. Pay slip also. I'm going to receive it. Fine. I remove the pay on it. The moment you receive it, what happens? This gets grayed out now. You can see it's grayed out. You know, it is no more applicable now. Fine. The create debit memo, everything is not done. Fine. Remove now. Fine. Nothing is there as such now. Fine. Pay on it is not there. Fine. Go there, and then click on what happens? Save and close now. Fine. Save. Basically. You know, give a save. So it is now saved. Fine. Now what happens? Everything is manual. Now we go to the purchase orders and then let me create another purchase order. And then 2023, let me query it. I will have to make a new order now. I will have to make a new order because what happens? The PMZ has been removed now. Fine, go there. It is J50 underscore sub one. And then give a tab. And then click on create now. So go there and then here what happens? Go down. Here what happens? The PMZ is not dash dash dash. That means what? This is not applicable at all for this purchase order. And go there. Click on plus now. Go there. I will not put the item over here now. J50 underscore item one. And then give it up. I will not go for hundred quantities. Is it clear? Somebody can say yes. So that I will not understand that we are all on the line actually. Is it clear? Anybody can say yes. So whether you are listening me or not, I will let have a confirmation. Hello? <clears throat> yeah, we are fine now. Okay, good. Fine. Yeah. So just to uh, ensure that whatever you are listening me, I know that. Uh, click on the schedules now. I will now put the schedule over here now. I will, go there. I will now put today's date. It is 25 iPhone, 11 iPhone, 17. And now, what happens? I am now going to make it what? I will now make it as good. what happens. We go to the edit now. So, in our company, whenever the supplier asks for advance, what happens? There is a prepayment invoice there. But our audit has clearly what happens? This, what happens? I said no. No prepayment is available in our company. No, you should not use it now. So instead, what happens? We use a two-way PO now. Fine. We will now make it as a PO and then two-way. A yeah, two-way PO is like an advance. Fine. We can give an advance to the supplier actually. So two-way PO means what? Without a result, we are going to what happens? Relieve the accrual now. The accrual gets relieved without a result actually. Fine. This is what we do it in our company. Fine. Always is a asset data. It will be accrual result only. Fine. As a direct delivery, it's okay. Fine. Go there. And then here, what happens? We go there. I'm not going to make any result at all. So it's a two-way PO invoice. Many companies will be using the two-way PO mainly for what? Giving an advance to the supplier. Click on OK. Click on OK. And then here, what happens? I'm going to submit it now. Fine. So this item is now getting submitted. I'm going to click on it. Submit. So 2024 is a two-way PO invoice. Two-way PO purchase order. For which what happens? Result is not mandatory at all. Result is not mandatory. So let us say against out of this item, what happens? It has got some uh, thousand and dollar values. So the supplier is asking for two hundred dollars as advance. So we can very well process this now. Fine. We can very well process this now. Fine. Go there. So we are going to process this. Fine. Go to the invoice now. Two zero two four is the one. So click on the create invoice. Now. Fine. Click on the create button. There is a create button here. I am now going to create an invoice. Click on create. And then the identifying PO is what two zero two four. So by which what happens? It gets relieved. Accrual gets relieved by this now. Two zero two four. Fine. Choose. What is this? D17 sub 2024, huh? Go there and then query on this now. 2024. <coughs> 2024. And then click on search now. Here I don't have any understanding because what happens? I don't have any access to any other BU. I have not given any roles. Why other BUs uh, 2024s are shown to me? I couldn't understand this. So it should show only my BU huh? because I don't have any access at all. Because I have given the data access only for my BU, but its others BUs are also shown. Fine. Only some certain BUs, not everything. Okay, man. Choose your 2020 for your BU over of your BU and then click on OK. <clears throat> so go there, 
And then here, what happens? The supplier is now giving an invoice number. Let's say it's thousand and one. And then give it. And then let's say he is now asking for sale. Let's say twenty five for for twenty five quantities. He's doing it. So he will be uh, using it along with the what happens? Your uh, what's called uh, uh, your taxes also taxes and duties. I don't know the amount really. So I'm not just putting it appropriately. Now I'm going to obtain the line level matching. If I click on match. In EBIS, what happens? You have to specifically mention now. Fine, you go there. So that has been bypassed now. Fine, go there. You go to the payables now. So when you are going to create an invoice, now go to the invoices, go to entry, and then go to invoices. And then here now you are putting some value over here now. Fine, the purchase order number percentage you are going to give it now. So percentage, you now put some purchase order over here now. You put it. And then here, what happens on the header level? You have to say in which level you want to match now. Whether the PO match or receipt match or invoice match. So if you make a wrong one and then click on the match in the bottom, it will not take place at all. Whereas in Fusion, it is not required at all. The match action is automatic. The system chooses the man, match action automatically. Whether it is a purchase order, receipt, or invoice, is being chosen by the system automatically. No need to specify on the header level at all. Fine. Header level, no need to specify. Click on OK. So you'll go and then see this now and go there. And then here, what happens? You click on the go icon now. It automatically chooses. Now it's a PO match, and so what happens? It will not match the PO. Click on it. Click on go. So click on go and then it automatically shows you, you know, fine. select the line and then for 25 quantities I'm going to process now. Fine. Select it and then not for 100. I will now make a change to 25 now. 25 is now processing. When the total amount is 112.50. No, sorry. It is 28.13 along with the taxes. So ordered is 100. Available for matching is 100 again. Fine. That means what is the two of you? For, it is available for matching 100. The entire 100 also if you want to give, you can give us advance. Fine. Nothing is received. Received is not applicable. Accepted, returned, consumed, fine ship. Nothing is applicable as here. Fine here, but it is available for matching. It is available for matching because the two APU. I click on OK now. So the system chooses whether how to match now. It is now matching it against purchase order, not the receipt. So I click on apply. And then click on OK. Even if you have received, it will not match only against the PO. I click on OK. <laughs> you have received 20, you can very well be it. But now what happens? The total line value is 28, 13. And then here, what happens? I click on save and then try to what happens? Validate it will not throw another. Because what happens, the header amount is not proper. So the line amount is 28.13. So if you go to what happens, invoice actions and then try to validate, it will not validate it. It will not throw an error. So what happens, you know, so it needs revalidation. There is a line variance is there. Header and line is not matching actually. Fine. So the, the, the hold is now generated by the system now. If it is a system generated hold, what happens, we cannot manually release, remember. Only your uh, other other holds, like what happens to you, if you have a payment hold or something like that, what happens, that can be released. But if there is a system hold, we have to correct the problem. So we will not correct the problem. It is 28.13 is the amount. So let me correct it now. 28.13. 28.13. And then you tap. What else? Go there. And then here, what happens? You go there. Click on what happens? Save. And then revalidate it. Now you are correct the problem. Go there. And then click on validate. Now it will go to validation. It is now validated. <laughs> now, what happens? Next is what? Three way result. We'll not go for a three-way zip, which is the famous one, which we have to do it against the other one. So go there. We'll not go to the purchase orders now. Fine. Go there. Go to your purchase orders. So what happens? Uh, click on this now. I will not click on manage purchase orders, manage orders, and then I'm going to make a query now. I click on manage orders, and then let me query it now. Go there. I have forgotten the 2024. Huh? Fine. 2024. You tap and find it out. Click on search and orders and open. So here, what happens? I go there. Go to actions and then do duplicate now. And go duplicate now. So do action is not dropping. What happens? There's a duplicate icon over here. I can do it now. If action is not dropping. So this is not dropping. But if you detach it and then see, fine. Click on detach. You click on detach. And then now action action, action will drop. When you detach it, it will definitely drop because of some space constraints on this. What happens? It's not dropping. Then you go to duplicate. Or otherwise, you can use the duplicate icon also. So detach it and then make it big. And then what happens? You get duplicate. I click on duplicate. I'm going to make a repeat purchase order. This purchase order will be a three-way result now. And go there. Not so everything is same now. As such, as I go there. Go to the schedules and then make it as a three-way result. And go there. Click on it. And then here, whatever. I'm going to edit it now. Click on edit. I'm not going to make it as what? Three-way result. Now. <clears throat> go there. So I'm not going to make it as what? Three-way result. So here, in EBIS, what happens? Whatever is now received only can be, what happens? Created as an invoice. Right? Into the three-way result. And go there, and the three-way receipt is now coming. And go there, so it is now there. So three-way receipt is there. Whatever is receipted for only what happens, we can now create the invoice. Click on OK. Click on submit. So I am going to submit it now. So two zero two five is now submitted for approval now. What is this? Two zero two five is 
Now what happens? Let us go on and receive this. I'm going to go there. I have no receive sale today. 20 quantities, 30 quantities I'm going to receive. 2025 I'm going to receive. 30 quantities now go there. Click on the receive expected shipments and let me receive it now. Fine. 2025 and then give a tap. Aye. It is not yet approved. 2025 give a tap and out. 2025 click on search now. So it's not coming up. Fine. Close it. Click on OK now. So click on search now. I'm going to search it now and select it now. So I know receive 30 quantities of this now. So against 30 quantities only, what happens? We cannot raise the invoice because it's a three-way receipt. Go there. I don't know populate this inventory. 30 quantities now receive. So only for 30 we can receive. So 2025 has got a 1016 invoice. Fine. Now automation is removed. So what happens? It will not be even sent to your it will not work at all. Now we go there and then create this. Go to the invoices and then here click on what happens, save and close and then come out of it now. And then now click on the create icon again and then create a new invoice for 2025 now. So remember, we have to relieve the accrual now. Accrual relieving is very, very important. Then only what happens will be done because otherwise many companies do not allow the manual invoice now. So 2025, choose your business unit now. 2025 of your business unit and click on OK now. Of your business unit, you choose it now. Click on OK. <coughs> And all of the details are populated. It is now invoice number is 1002. Fine, go there. And then here amount is what 30 quantities. And so what happens? Uh, he is now going to ask for 40 quantities. Fine. In uh, EBIS, it will now raise a hold. Fine. If you go for 40 quantities, fine, 40. And then I will now add that, uh, this thing also. I will now add the taxes also. But we go there. 40 quantities I'm going to match. But receive is only 30. Fine. Click on the match now. So the system automatically takes a receipt match. Only 30 is available and not 100. Now. In the previous case, it was a two APO. So available was 100. The purchase order quantity was available as available. And then here, what happens? It takes only what happens? whatever is the receipt quantity is only available. So the match option of PO receipt or uh, receipt match is uh, taken by the system automatically. The system decides based upon the PO. And you need not have to specify anywhere else. What happens? The available for what happens? Relieving or obtaining the line level it was 30. Now you select it. And then here, what happens? I'm going to overbill. I'm going to be overbilling by doing for 40 quantities. The supplier has now overbilled for 40 quantities. Don't give it up. It's now going to give a warning now. Fine, go there. So what happens? It has now become yellow in color, red color. Fine, go there. So it may say warning. Completing this match will result in the overbill now. Completing this. So it's not just a warning only. But again, what happens in the previous case in EBIS, what the payables will do is once when they do a overbilling, what happens? It will now raise a hold now. Fine. Fine. The match match hold will be uh, raised. So once when the match hold is raised, what happens? The payables clock, if required, they will now override it by releasing the hold. So here we will now see what happens now. Right? You know, here also you are overbilling. So here what happens? You go there and see is now. Right? We are overbilling. Click on apply now. <clears throat> click on apply. And then click on OK. So we are now applied it. Fine, go there. The line level distribution is now made. Fine, what else? So completing this match will now result in the overbill. Okay, doesn't matter. Yeah, fine. It is now giving you a warning also. Go there. So let us now correct it now. Fine. So 40 plus what happens? It comes to around 45 now. 40 quantities. So what happens? The amount is 45. So let me correct it now. Fine. 45. And then go there. And then let us now validate it. Fine. Go there. We have a save now. And then validate it. So click on what happens. You go to invoice actions and then click on validate. It was never validated. It got validated. It doesn't create any hold at all. Fine. No hold is created actually. Fine. It got validated. Because what happens? The payable clerk is now purposely doing it now. Fine. He is now having an invoice for 40 quantities from the supplier. And then what happens? He has decided, okay, fine, I will now make a payment. So in EBIS, what happens is a two-step process. What happens? The system will now create a hold. What happens is that what happens? The match hold. Fine. It's a two-way, three-way, four-way match. Fine. So it is a what happens the match hold. It now, since we have what happens a three-way receipt match, so in a three-way, what happens you have to receive it. So we are not receiving it, and so what happens? It's now deviating that condition, and so what happens? The hold will be created in EBS, and then they manually release the hold to make a payment. Here, no such requirement now, because since the clerk himself is only making it on the on the what happens match option, what happens? This system does not create any hold at all. So the unnecessary steps have been avoided in uh, Fusion actually. And there are so many other things, other good enhancements in financials. Fine. Go on and try to learn the financials fully. You will understand it to a great extent, actually. This completes the procure to pay push both automatically through ERS route as well as the manually 
and that too what happens you are relieving the lines got it yes sir good 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 fine so it is actually enhancement in every stage actually we have got an enhancement in each and every stage and so what happens you will be loving this product in a degree extra actually people love to work on uh, on diffusion and no more ebus basically <laughs> but again i have a questions in uh, rtp see uh, for example this is fine so mm. if you come asn or asbn yeah how the, it will go for interface right uh, a reset interface from there it will push to receiving tables yes. so, asbn has come asn has also come uh, everything has come now fine but uh, what happens uh, it will all be functional in release 13 fully in risk 12 also i think it is functional i am not sure because i don't have a what's called ice supply portal license in this one so i cannot i, I heard that i heard from uh, oracle sales team ice supplier was not fully integrated even r13 oh god is it so yeah yeah uh, i saw that uh, i, I heard uh, some uh, things that what happens uh, there are many features of ice supply portal of uh, ebus is now getting copied into fusion but uh, you are saying that what happens even everything is not fully uh, integrated with uh, what happens even this thing okay fine that may be the thing and then uh, i was told that uh, as and asbn will become functional in release 13 that's what i was told but i am not sure but again uh, not only asn sir for example uh, some uh, interfaces coming right uh, mm. receiving interfaces right yes, exactly so for yeah. receiving interfaces they say that there is a separate uh, transaction now there is one separate concurrent now suppose if it is coming from sap system or a jd edwards system or a people soft system what happens okay. there is a separate uh, what happens a receiving transaction uh, some uh, some concurrent is there that will take care of interface into the fusion basically. that is what they say uh, okay okay yeah. I mean, instead of rtp what happens uh, they have made it so here what happens everything is now clubbed along with rtp so rtp gets overloaded so they say that what okay. happens uh, this is not required for a normal one only for an exceptional one we have a separate concurrent now. Uh, okay got it that is how it is being done so you it means that the completely remove the rtp process yeah 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 okay so we'll now break for a cup of tea and then we'll now come back at 11:05 now fine it is now 10:48 now ah one more doubt now tell me yeah uh now actually when we are uh, like creating a purchase order yeah after uh, entering all the details we have some uh, clicked on the button uh, submit okay yeah so when we click on submit something concurrent program will be submitted uh, back back and said yeah if i supplier portal is enabled what happens uh, communicating to the supplier what happens in ebus what happens yeah concurrent will run for communications fine basically po output communication fine that will be running for communicating to the supplier actually so if you see on the ebus i'll show you fine here also something will run because i don't have a, a, this license i don't know what exactly it is now so here what happens we go there in this place if you see what happens po output for communication will be running this one this communication to supplier actually this is becoming into supply through the i supply portal so here also what happens you have a, a equivalent one in fusion that is what i heard but since i don't have i supply portal license at all when i am unable to demonstrate that now fine <clears throat> otherwise what happens if you have a instance which has got i supply portal license what happens trying that now. so we have a similar one in uh, fusion also that can but even uh, Yeah. Uh, Nana sir, PO output for communication is just for a PA, Oracle standard template PO print report, right? Not a print report. It only communicates to the ice supplier portal. Fine. It may be printing okay. also. Okay, fine. Printing also it will do. But what happens uh, through the ice supplier portal, you will be able to visualize this only when this runs. Even yeah, whenever. So even if if I don't have ice supplier is licensed. Yeah, yeah. then it will print of course. Once my, no, once my PO is approved, automatically this will get triggered automatically. Yeah, yeah. This will be triggered. and then it will be printing it also correct you just see whether uh, if i supply portal is not there whether the pu output for communication is coming or not i have my own doubt when printing invoice maybe uh, it's coming sir it's coming actually huh? yeah it's coming see whenever the my pu is approved so is it the system will not check whether i supply exists or not uh -huh. automatically this program will get triggered mm -hmm. but normally in client place all the people they will disable this pu output for communication Mm -hmm. they will enable that custom uh, po print report ah uh, yeah that's all custom po print report is the one which is used extensively because what happens you want it in, in your own format na so that format would have been designed by the technical team and then the custom po report only will be printed actually
but this is uh, definitely required for uh, eye supply only eye supply portal is via this now in this place uh, and the similar facility will must be available here also <coughs> a similar facility will be available <coughs> Try to work on eye supply bottle and you'll understand it. The next topic is retroactive pricing. And so what happens, we will uh, see after a cup of tea now. Right? We'll now come back at uh, sure. 11 5 and then we'll now uh, start. Okay. Now breaking it and then at the India time, 11 5, we'll now begin again. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you.